It's Saturday the 10th of March and for once I'm not going on a crazy adventure to see a show. I know, <laughs> literally, um, I am going to my local theatre and it's um, a bit different because uh, basically we don't get as many good touring shows and for about a year or so we had the theatre being renovated so I believe it opened again about, um, it was about, it was late last year, about November time I think but we had a lot of things I wasn't interested in like plays and stuff <laughs> and then I saw the pantomime and then um, a couple of weeks ago I saw Jersey Boys, the UK tour, really enjoyed that but I've decided to vlog today because I am seeing the Take That musical, The Band. I'm actually going just with my grandma, I bought her tickets for her birthday last year so it's been a long wait to give her a present properly and um, hopefully she remembers the tickets bless her because I gave them to her and I actually um, booked front row because I know that her eyesight's not the best these days <laughs> so I decided to get front row and annoyingly, obviously front row was top price and now there's a best available offer on Travel Zoo, I believe and people are getting front row for like £25 and I'm like, whatever but anyway, I booked months ago and I'm very excited because I actually love Take That it's a bit of a guilty pleasure I always have, my dad loves Take That that's one thing we have in common um, <laughs> so he always has his Take That like concert DVDs on and I love the songs and basically, um, if you're not aware there was a different Take That musical years ago called Never Forget and I was obsessed. They made a DVD of this um, show, like a professional recording, and I saw it on tour years ago, and it was basically when Take That was still broken up, and the concept of the show was, um, it was a tribute band for Take That, so it was all these characters like coming together to make a tribute band, and I loved it. So this one's quite different, because it's actually not featuring Take That as an existing band, I believe. I believe there was the full Let It Shine competition show to get the band to be featured. So basically it's about, um, all these like young girls that grow up with being fans of a band and this band is fictional but the songs they sing will be take that songs that's as far as i'm aware but i'm very excited i have a way um a couple of days ago take that actually surprised everybody in the audience and um performed at the end of the show so yep a little bit heartbroken about that i missed that all completely but either way i'm very excited i feel like i rambled on for this intro but yeah i'm gonna be seeing the show at my local theater <laughs> with my grandma she might not want to be featured in this i have no idea bless her um but i definitely wanted to kind of vlog it because it's something quite different and i definitely want to do a little review at the end so i hope you enjoy now home and oh my god like I actually can't explain how much I enjoyed that show I feel like I need to give a proper review but it was honestly so good like my grandma bless her it was just me and her seeing the show like I mentioned and in her words it was the most exciting day she's had in a long time and she loved it so yeah I feel like I need to explain all of this properly because it was honestly so good <laughs> Like I mentioned, I'm actually a really big fan of Take That and I think I mentioned before that I was a big fan of the first ever attempt at a Take That musical called Never Forget and if you're not familiar with this, here's the DVD. <laughs> I used to watch this obsessively and I used to love the guy playing Ash there. I believe I've seen him as Shrek in the West End now, Life Girl Achieved, but yeah, this was basically like my childhood. I watched it so many times, I saw it when it came on tour and I was kind of... I'm not, like just to give you a heads up I did compare it a lot to this because this is what I had in mind and it honestly it was at the same level if not even better and all for very different reasons I would say it's actually quite hard to compare the two because they are very different in the style um I think I feel like I mentioned this in the intro like I said but um basically never forget was based on the idea that they are creating a tribute band for take that um so it's all these like original characters but they are playing like Gary Barlow Robbie Williams that sort of thing but in the band it's all very like original and the story oh my god the story was so so good like I'd heard from some people that it was sad 
I was almost bawling. Like some of those plot points, I was not pre I was not prepared for it. I was like, oh my god. I'm of course going to keep the review spoiler free, but um, just to kind of set the scene a little bit, as you walk into the theatre, it's all very 90s. And um, on the um, screen, there's like a projection of like an old TV set. And on the TV, it kept changing channels, kind of like teletext, <laughs> if you remember that. And it was 1993 that it set in at this point. And on the screen, you saw things like BBC World News saying about... Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but about how one of the um, presidents has been sworn in for the USA back in the 90s, and then it had like all the um, top 20 ch music charts of the 90s, so take that were um, at the top of Prey. And it was very clever, so that kind of like helps set the scene, makes you feel very nostalgic and stuff. And um, then as the show begins, you start off with this set of um, teenage girls, all a friendship group, and they are massive fans of a band. And I think in the show they're just called the band like i'm not sure if that's supposed to be the actual band's name or if they're just referring to it as their band but um yeah it's really good um so basically it starts off when they're all young and everything and i don't think this is spoilers or anything it's just kind of a general plot summary you get from the trailer basically over the years they lose touch and then um one of them wins tickets to go see the reunion tour and they all decide to kind of get back in contact and go on tour so the main part of the story really is that like these young girls have grown up with a boy band and they kind of do like a really funny scene where like they're kind of imagining the boy band in their everyday life when they're younger like as they're getting ready for school and everything and it was really clever how they kind of all appeared out of nowhere and then um, one the main girl um called rich she kept she keeps them um, kind of like talking to the boys almost kind of saying sing louder boys and everything so that was really funny but the story is really it's really like really nice because you see them when they're all younger and they kind of all talk about what their hopes are in life and stuff and then you kind of see how that's very different to what they actually achieve and how their life has turned out in the future so like that's very deep but it is a very nice story like i felt like it could be a bit cheesy and of course we're talking about a boy band there's elements of cheese but i think it's presented so well and like the actual it's hard to explain the actual boy band themselves they're acting but they don't have any like speaking roles or anything they are always just in the background and they kind of fall into the scene so if they're at the airport they'll be working like as staff on the plane and stuff like that and it is really clever and everything and I'm sure that you are aware that there was a television show in order to find the band for this show and it was called Let It Shine and um, Gary Barlow was on it and everything and there were loads of boy bands competing to kind of be the band for the UK tour so I must admit I did not actually watch all of Let It Shine and um, I watched a few episodes and I got a little bit confused because at that point I didn't really understand the concept because I was thinking yeah they can sing they can sort of dance can they act like I just didn't really get if like why they hadn't like tested if they could act or anything yet but basically um they act that is not needed in the plot really they're like acting on stage but there's no like spoken dialogue for them they're very much the um storytellers like they're like they're kind of in the background like kind of singing the songs as the story goes on in front of them you probably already know this if you're watching but the group that actually won that television show were called five to five and like i said i did not watch all of it so i didn't really i, I hadn't really heard them properly i know for a fact that my cousin tegan's a massive fan and she's seen the show later on this week so i'm sure she's very excited but yeah i was reading up about them in the program and everything and they were so good like i was pleasantly surprised um I kind of had fears that it might be a little bit X-Factory, but I was so wrong. Like, they could harmonise, like, they can sing and they can dance. Like, they looked like a boy band. So they were honestly amazing. <laughs> so these were the actual members of the boy band. So we have AJ, Curtis, Saria, Nick and Yazdan. So they were honestly really good. Very impressed. <laughs> the programme, of course, also features actual Take That. Um, kind of tells a bit about that. And I was gutted that I missed them because they surprised the audience about three nights ago and... <laughs> Like, I would have actually cried. But anyway, <laughs> on a side note, I actually managed to get this program for free because I've signed up for the, um, my local theatre's kind of membership card and everything, like a student membership. So pretty chuffed with that. I got like a little voucher being able to use it on a program of my choice. And I thought, I'm just going to go for the band because upcoming shows I'm not as interested in or I've seen them before. So I've got programs. So just thought I'd throw that out there. But I believe they were only like four or five pounds. And then there was a more of a larger souvenir brochure. I did film some of the um, merchandise because there was t-shirts and stuff but yeah. <laughs> as far as actually making the songs um, relevant to the story I thought they did a really good job and um, there's obviously the songs where it's not quite as re relevant they get away with kind of doing like concert scenes and stuff but I think they did a really good selection like they sang my favourite one which is Rule the World like literally at the very end um, but yeah some of the songs they have is A Million Love Songs, Back for Good, Could It Be Magic, um, Greatest Day, 
Prey, Relight like My Fire, like literally like all the best ones. So I was really impressed with that because sometimes jukebox musicals, I think you can call that this one a jukebox musical, and um, sometimes it isn't as clever. I personally think Mamma Mia is one of the best ones because I think all, all of the lyrics kind of tie into that story perfectly. But yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised at how they've done it. I was also like really impressed with all of the set and everything. Like, I think it was so clever because basically like they managed to kind of like use projections as well as actual set pieces to kind of make the illusion of different things because at one point um, a plane um, kind of turns into a disco ball like the way they kind of used the projection and everything so that was really clever. They managed to create like a really good range of sets as well because we had like a school location, a location like on some rocks overlooking the city, um, a bedroom, we had um, Prague, an airport, the actual concert, like they were really clever how they did it. There was also like a really good use of special effects because a theatre usher actually um, came and kind of warned us to make sure all of our stuff was not near the railing at the front and we were thinking oh okay and they said um because of the fire used in the show. And we were like, oh, okay. And literally during Relight My Fire, like full on like hot effect fire, like kind of like just went from the floor right in front of us. Like it almost singed off my eyebrows. Like <laughs> it was like very intense. And then also they um, used like a confetti thing at one point. So like all this confetti fell on the stage. And then in the next scene, there was like a fan used and smoke and all of the fan literally just flew all of the confetti straight into like our faces in the first few rows. So that was really funny. I was honestly so impressed with the cast in general. Um, as far as the cast goes, all there really is is the young versions of the girls, the grown-up versions, the band, and then just a couple of side characters and ones that played multiple roles and everything. They were all so good. Like there was so many funny comedic lines. Like I think it was just the perfect balance of fun, laughter and also like the heartwarming story that you kind of need to tie everything together. I also just want to give a shout out to Rachel Lumberg who plays adult Rachel and she's arguably the main character I guess you could say and she was honestly really good like the acting was amazing the story like I was very impressed like clearly she's done quite a lot here. <laughs> I also just wanted to point out that we had one understudy on and that was Maddie Banks who's the understudy for Heather she played Heather today and she was honestly really good as well I wouldn't have known obviously if she was an understudy or not but just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> of course with jukebox musicals day you do have the um crippling fear of people thinking they can sing throughout the full show which thankfully I don't think is an issue with this show because it didn't happen here and um, basically during the actual um like kind of concert style scenes they kind of encourage you to kind of clap along and some people were singing but it kind of just stuck to those scenes so it felt perfectly fine like I even sang along a little bit whenever it felt like people were um but during the actual like storyline bits and the moving songs and stuff like that we had none of it so that was very good <laughs> I think that's everything I want to say um I just I don't know if I've been able to put into words just how much I loved it like it's one of those shows where it's had so much promotion I remember when it was announced that it was coming to my theatre, it was quite a big deal and obviously they had the television show which is a lot of promotion for it and everything and it's kind of one of those where you think is it a lot of hype over something that's not that good but I honestly like I, I had I had good expectations still but it's blown them out of proportion like I just loved it so much it was fun it was like heartfelt I feel like I'm still like on a theatre high or something you know when you leave a show and you just loved it so much and you kind of just have that like edge to go like see it straight away again I should have seen the evening performance as well to be honest why not I had nothing stopping me but yeah I honestly really highly recommend it like it's just one of those feel-good shows and if it's coming to like a local theatre I think it is West End quality Um, I don't think I could see it ever going to the West End nor do I, do I really think it would need a place there because I feel like it's kind of the show that would do better touring but it has that quality. <laughs> So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope I have managed to like summarise all of my thoughts there quite well. I tried to kind of like round it all up. But um, this week's actually going to be a very stagey week for me because I impulsively a few days ago booked a train to Liverpool, as you do, um, to go see the UK tour of Wicked because my friend Holly actually studies there for uni and she so kindly let me stay at hers. So I'm very excited to see her and see Wicked on tour because I have not seen the touring cast yet. So that'll be very exciting. And then this weekend I'm back in London. <laughs> Honestly, like this is, I don't know how this worked out, but I'm seeing like four shows this week, all in different locations basically. But in London, I am seeing Pippin, and then I'm also seeing 42nd Street for the cast change. So very exciting times. So do subscribe if you want to see those. And <laughs> thanks for watching.